All right, a uh, local guy is getting ready to build a rigid bike, and he noticed that when he sat his frame he was going to use on a level flat table, he noticed that the frame rocked. And the concern was, is this frame going to be seaworthy? Is it going to be worth building the bike off of? Or is it tweaked? Has it been a wreck or whatever? So he brought it by for me to check out to see exactly what's going on with it. Uh, just as a way of introduction, yeah, for Big T, good idea to get a picture of the frame we're going to be working on with today. Okay. Just by way of introduction, when he said that the frame was rocking on a flat table, I said I wasn't too necessarily too concerned about that because all that tells me is that the bottom of the frame rails may be out of plane with each other, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the four most important components of frame geometry are out of whack. Those four things are that the neck is perpendicular to the earth itself, regardless of the rake, that it's perpendicular this way. I'm not talking about the rake, I'm talking about perpendicular to level of the earth this way. Number two, that the axle is level to the earth in this plane. Number three, that the motor mounts are in a, the motor and the trans mounts are in the proper alignment if you're looking at it from up from above that they're in the proper alignment to each other and then if you're looking at them in this plane here that they are in the same plane maybe not necessarily on the on the same level they shouldn't be on the same level but that they are in the same plane one's not tweaked this direction versus the other direction those are the four most important things I look for to see is a frame seaworthy. Okay? What I'm going to do is take you through the steps, just really quick, dirty checks to see where we're at in this situation. Okay? What we started by what we started do, by doing is we put some blocks under it and shimmed it so that we got the front motor mount sitting at exactly zero. Okay, Big T, if you can get a close-up of that, you can see yep. the front mount, motor mount is zero. Yep. What this allows to do is check, okay, if the front motor mount is, is being held into a dead level with the earth position, how do the other one rear motor mount, two front trans mount, three rear trans mount, and axle, they should all be in that same level plane in a perfect frame. So we're going to check to see, okay, with the front motor mount held dead level, the other one, two, three, four positions are, should also be dead level. So with the front motor mount held at zero, we've got a variety of other levels we're going to check here. Here's the front trans. As you can see, you may or may not be able to see very well. Let me move the level over a little bit. It's pretty close to level. Mm -hmm. Rear trans is uh, bubble le what I call bubble left. It's not exactly perfect. So it's starting to show some tweakage, I'll call it. As we come backward, it's starting to go like this. Okay? which makes sense because when I let go of the frame and let it rock to where it wants to be, this tube is also upward. Okay, so working on back, I just, I just took an axle off the pile, it's a three-quarter axle. If you want to get a close-up of that bubble there, Big T. You got bubble left. With the front motor mount on zero, with it rocked back to where it's at zero, you can see that the axle still bubble left. Okay. Rear trans is bubble left. Front trans almost level, but but almost starting to get bubble left. So what we know 
is that as the frame comes back, it's starting to plane like this. And it's getting worse as it comes back. 